Hi to everyone. Yeah, today I'm going to uh, explain about the types of circuit breakers uh, in a subject, the power system protection. So the power system protection in this, uh, we are going to discuss about the various uh, protection schemes. Yeah, generally the protection uh, devices cost is just five uh, percent of the total equipment. Just five percent of the total equipment. Yeah. Here, the protection is necessary for any electrical device. Yeah, if uh, if we don't provide any protection for that, then what happens? The equipment will be get damaged. The equipment will be get damaged. So, in order to avoid damage and in order to avoid the revenue losses, we have to introduce the protect protection schemes. Yeah. So in this session, we are going briefly. Uh, we are going to discuss about uh, the basic function of the circuit breaker and uh, the classifications of the circuit breakers. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, we are going to discuss about uh, circuit breaker. The circuit breaker it is an switch. The circuit breaker it is an switch, and uh, it can make the circuit or it can break the circuit. The circuit breaker performs these two functions. The circuit breaker it can make the circuit or it can break the circuit. Yeah. So when it make the circuit, making in the sense it close the contacts of a devices. Yeah. The circuit breaker it is connected uh, along with the source and load terminals. Yeah. The circuit breaker it connects the source and load terminals. Yeah. When uh, under normal operating conditions, under normal operating condition, the circuit break, it makes the circuit. It makes the circuit in the sense the load will be connected to the source circuit with the help of this switching device. And the second function is breaking. So breaking when it breaks the circuit, the circuit breaker when it breaks the circuit, yeah, under abnormal conditions, under abnormal conditions. What happens? The most of the faults are short circuit faults. The most of the faults are short circuit faults. So in that case, what happens? Under short circuiting condition, the heavy current flows through the devices. When heavy current flows through the devices, what happens? When this uh, magnitude of current exceeds the rating of the machine, then what happens? The machine will be get damaged, and that may cause revenue loss. So, in order to avoid that, so we are introducing this uh, protection device that is a circuit breaker. Yeah, earlier, uh, uh, the primary protection device is the fuse. The primary protection device is the fuse. So, what is the function of the fuse? The fuse, it is a current operating device. The fuse is a current operating device. And uh, here, wh uh, where it can be employed, it can be employed. In various laboratories and household appliances. Yeah, this is the primary protection device. The primary protection device is the fuse. So, what it does? So, it is also performs the same function as the circuit breaker. And uh, this is uh, in which what happens? The circuit breaker, uh, so in fuse, uh, what happens? It is also performs the same function. It can make the circuit. And uh, here, uh, in our laboratory, uh, we have seen uh, uh, many laboratories in uh, electrical cores and uh, DC machines and AC machines. So in that case, what happens? We uh, while performing experiments, uh, the motor terminals will be connected to the source along with the fuse terminals. So here, what happens if any fault or any abnormal condition is takes place? What happens? The first the fuse will be blown up. First, the fuse will be blown up. And due to this, what happens? The load will be disconnected from the source. The load will be disconnected from the source. In that way, that provides the protection for the machine terminals or load terminals. Yeah. So the fuse, it has uh, some drawbacks. What are that? It has some limitations. What are that? Uh, now we are going to discuss. And uh, the fuse, when it, when it 
blows off what happens first the power interruption is takes place when the fuse blows off the power interruption is takes place and it will take some time to restore the power supply it will take some time to restore the supply so and uh, sometimes it cannot uh, interrupts uh, heavy currents and due to this what happens the damage will be takes place yeah these are the limitations of the fuse and uh, generally uh, the power system networks operating with the high operating voltages and uh, currents and uh, in that case the fuse cannot withstand for that the fuse cannot be withstand for that so in order to overcome this drawbacks of the fuse we are going to introduce uh, one protecting device that is called as circuit breaker so what are the drawbacks uh, just now we discussed the drawbacks will be overcome by the circuit breaker yeah the circuit breaker and the fuse these two are the current operating devices and this is the basic function of the circuit breaker it can makes the circuit and it can breaks the circuit under normal operating condition or it makes the circuit means which connects the load to the source terminals and uh, if any abnormal condition is takes place then what happens the the circuit breaker it disconnect the load from the source and due to this what happens the heavy current will be interrupted and the load will be simply disconnected from the source and uh, in this way it provides the protection for the load terminals the load it may be motor or any other device here yeah, this is the basic function of the circuit breaker and uh, basically uh, circuit breakers are classified into four types now we are going to discuss about the classifications of the circuit breaker and uh, this these are the types of circuit breakers uh, what are that one is oil circuit breaker and second one is air blast circuit breaker and third one sf6 circuit breaker and fourth one vacuum circuit breaker yeah on which basis uh, these circuit breakers are classified now we are going to discuss so based on the insulating flame yeah the circuit breaker it is a normal switch and it consists of fixed terminals and uh, moving terminals and uh, in which what happens under normal operating condition the fixed contact will be closed with the moving contact and if any fault is takes place then what happens the moving contact will be withdrawn from the fixed contact yeah in the circuit breaker basically it consists of two devices what are that a relay and tripping coil the relay is placed in conjunction with the tripping coil here what happens what is the basic function of the relay here the relay it senses the abnormal condition and it gives activates signal to the tripping circuit or it activates the tripping coil the relay it senses the abnormal condition and it activates the tripping coil so once the tripping coil is energized then what happens the fixed contact the moving contact will be withdrawn from the fixed contact so due, uh, due to this what happens the device will be protected yeah this is the basic function of the circuit breaker and uh, this is about the circuit breaker classifications on which basis the circuit breakers are classified based on the insulating fluid yeah here if the breaker contacts are operated in oil and uh, it it is classified as oil circuit breaker and based on the insulating fluid it can be operated in the oil or it can be operated in the air or it can be operated in the sf6 gas or it can be operated in the vacuum yeah so based on the insulating fluid of the circuit breaker the circuit breakers are classified into four types what are that the first classification is oil circuit breaker and the second one is a plus circuit breaker third one sf6 circuit breaker and fourth one is the vacuum circuit breaker yeah these are the basic classifications of the circuit breaker yeah so far we discussed about what is the function of the circuit breaker and uh, 
<coughs> how they are classified. So, what are that classifications? Uh, just we we'll discuss. And uh, next, uh, briefly, we are going to discuss about the oil circuit breakers. So, generally, the oil circuit breakers are again classified into two types. So, the uh, one is a bulk oil circuit breaker, and the second one is a uh, low oil circuit breakers. Now, briefly, we are going to discuss about these oil circuit breakers. Yeah. Uh, this is the general operation of the oil circuit breaker. Uh, what happens uh, when the contacts of the breakers are operated in the oil? Yeah, you can see the vertical lines indicates the vertical lines indicate that uh, is known as potting contacts. That is nothing but fixed contact and moving contact of the breaker, and the bubbles are nothing but what arc. The bubbles are nothing but arc, and uh, the dotted indicates what the dots indicates oil. So here, the circuit breaker contacts the two vertical lines are known as contacts of the breaker, and uh, one is fixed and another is moving, and these two contacts are operating in the oil. These two contacts are operating in the oil, and uh, here what happens? When uh, excess current under abnormal condition, what happens? Excess current that flows through the contacts of the breaker. Under abnormal condition, what happens? The excess current that flows through the contacts of the breaker. Yeah, here when excess current flows through the contacts of the breaker, what happens? The contacts will be get overheated. The contacts will get overheated. And uh, here, by utilizing this heat energy, the oil. It utilizes the oil which utilizes utilizing this heat energy. What happens? The oil will be vaporized. The oil will be vaporized, and uh, this uh, vapor that is uh, disassociated into various gases. This uh, vapor that uh, disassociated into uh, various uh, gases, and uh, the main uh, gas is the hydrogen gas. The hydrogen gas it occupies more space. The hydrogen gas it occupies more space. And uh, uh, what is the property of this uh, hydrogen gas? It has high uh, temperature coefficient. The hydrogen gas it has high temperature coefficient. And due to this, uh, what happens? It occupies more space, and it has high temperature coefficient. And due to this, what happens? It cools the Arc. It cools the arc. So the dots between the two contacts that uh, represents the arc. So whenever uh, under abnormal condition the contacts are operated in the oil, when the moving contact is withdrawn from the fixed contact, and uh, during this interval, what happens? Arc will be initiated between the contacts of the breaker. Arc will be initiated between the contacts of the breaker, but the arc is undesirable, but the arc is undesirable. We have to extinguish the arc. We have to extinguish the arc within a short time. So, if if you are failed to extinguish the arc within a short time, then what happens? If the arc exists for a long time, then what happens? The damage will be takes place. If the arc fails to or uh, extinguish, then what happens? Due, due to this arc path, the heavy current which flows from fixed contact to the moving contact and further that flows to the load terminals and, and due to this what happens? The load will be damaged. The load will be damaged. Whether the load it may be motor or any other device. So that's why we have to extinguish the arc within a short time. Yeah, here uh, what happens when the contacts are operated in the oil uh, by utilizing the heat energy? The oil will be vaporized, and that vaporized oil it consists of uh, gases. In that, the major one is the hydrogen gas. The hydrogen gas it uh, it has high temperature coefficient, and it cools the arc. And uh, in this way, it facilitates arc extinction process. And uh, in another way, uh, what is that? See, 
the, uh, the when the gases are generated in the oil, then what happens? It occupies more space and that creates the turbulence in the oil. That creates turbulence in the oil. And due to this, what happens? The oil that uh, moves around the contacts of the breaker. And due to this, what happens? The oil will flows around the contacts of the breaker. And uh, uh, during this part, when oil it flows between the contacts of the breaker, then what happens? The arcing particles will be washed away by using this oil. When the turbulence is created in the oil, then what happens? The oil moves over the contacts of the breaker. When the oil it moves over the contacts of the breaker, uh, this oil that uh, uh, wash away the arcing particles between the contacts of the breaker. So in this way, the arc extinction will be facilitated. Yeah, these are the two methods. Next, yeah, the arc extinction is facilitated uh, by two processors. Just now we discussed what is that. The first one is the hydrogen gas. It has high heat conductivity and cools the arc and thus aiding the deionization of the medium between the contacts of the breaker. See, when uh, uh, contacts of the breakers operated in the oil, then what happens? By utilizing the heat energy, what happens? The oil will be vaporized. So, the vaporized oil, it consists of conductive particles or free electrons. The vaporized oil, the vaporized oil, it consists of conductive particles and due to this, what happens? The arc will be structured between the fixed and moving contact. And here, uh, when the hydrogen gas, it cools the arc, when, uh, what happens? That helps in deionization. Deionization in the sense what? Uh, by removing the conductive particles or by removing the free electrons uh, between the contacts of the breaker. That process is known as deionization. Yeah. Uh, and due to this, what happens? The arc extinction will be facilitated. And uh, secondly, the gas set up a turbulence. The second process in which the gas it set it set it sets up the turbulence in the oil, and due to this, what happens? The oil will be flows around the contacts of the breaker. When it flows uh, between the contacts of the breaker, that will wash away the arcing particles between the contacts of the breaker. And due to this, what happens? The deionization is takes place. The enough dielectric strength is then um, built up between the contacts of the breaker. And due to this, the arc extinction is facilitated. Yeah, these are the basic classifications of the oil circuit breaker. Uh, what are that? Uh, the first one is the bulk oil circuit breaker. And the second one is the low oil circuit breaker. Yeah, in which uh, first we are briefly uh, discuss about the bulk oil circuit breaker. Yeah, in a bulk oil circuit breaker, uh, what happens? The large quantity of oil is required in bulk oil circuit breaker. The large quantity of oil is required to extinguish the arc. And this oil, it serves a two purposes. The oil, it serves a two purposes. What are that? The first thing is, it extinguishes the arc during opening and uh, opening the contacts and it insulate the conducting particles from the earthing tank. It provides the proper insulation for the, uh, for the conducting particles from the earth tank. Yeah, I'll show the block diagram of a bulk oil circuit breaker. So by seeing this circuit, uh, you can understand what are the various uh, Oh, yeah, this one is the bulk oil circuit breaker. Yeah, you can see uh, it is a tank uh, which consists of uh, two types of contacts. What are that? One is fixed contact and another is moving contact. And uh, here the tank is uh, almost it is filled with the oil. And uh, here 
inside of this tank it consists of two contacts what are that fixed contact and moving contact and uh, the top of the tank uh, one element is there that is called air cushion and oil level yeah you can see the level of the oil and the air cushion the air cushion uh, what is the purpose of this the air cushion it provides the sufficient room for the gases see during the process of uh, circuit breaker uh, what happens the gases will be generated a yeah, basic operation of the oil circuit breaker uh, just now we discussed in that what happens uh, the oil by utilizing the heat energy what happens it will uh, vaporize and the vaporized oil that consists of uh, gases and the the major gas is the hydrogen gas it has high temperature coefficient and it cools the oil this is the first process and uh, first uh, we are going to discuss about construction uh, later we will discuss about the uh, operation so first uh, it consists of fixed contact and moving contact and uh, yeah it is almost filled with the oil and uh, yeah the, under normal operating condition what happens this fixed contact and moving contact these two will be completely closed the fixed contact and moving contact normally these two will be completely closed and if any fault is takes place if any abnormal condition is takes place in that case what happens the fixed the moving contact that will be withdrawn from the fixed contact the moving contact that will be withdrawn from the fixed contact and uh, and due to this what happens the contacts get separated the moving contact and fixed contacts are separated when the contacts are separated then what happens the arc will be struck between the contacts of the breaker the arc will be struck between the contacts of the breaker so uh, what is our aim we have to extinguish the arc we have to extinguish the arc if the arc exists for a long time then what happens the damage will be takes place so in order to avoid that the arc will be extinguished within a short time yeah so <coughs> when the arc is uh, formed between the contacts of the breaker so here what happens by utilizing this uh, heat energy the oil will be vaporized and uh, the oil uh, the vaporized oil it consists of, that will be disassociated into gases so in which the major gas is the hydrogen gas it has high temperature coefficient it cools the arc this is the first process and the oil that creates a turbulence in the oil and due to this what happens the oil will be fluctuates and that flows over the contacts of the breaker and due to this what happens the arcing particles will be washed away from the two contacts fixed and moving contacts and due to this what happens the deionization process is takes place and uh, the nf dielectric strength is uh, built between the contact of the breakers and due to this what happens the arc extinction will be facilitated yeah this is about the working of bulk oil circuit breaker and uh, the air cushion it provides sufficient room for the generation of gases as well as uh, it provides the protection uh, for the mechanical shocks experienced by the oil during the operation of the circuit breaker yeah this is about the bulk oil circuit breaker uh this is about arc extinction uh, process the just now we discussed uh, that is hydrogen gas that uh, that is the major gas uh, which is generated uh, when the contacts are get separated and uh, it has high, uh, that will provide uh, deionization between the contacts of the breaker and uh, here the turbulence in the oil and the, when the gases are generated between the contacts of the breaker then what happens the turbulence is created in the oil tank and due to this the oil will be fluctuates uh, between the contacts of the breaker so that will be uh, washed away the contact uh, arcing particles between the contacts of the breaker so in that way the arc extinction will be facilitated yeah this is about the bulk oil circuit breaker yeah the next one is the 
uh, low oil circuit breaker. So in which uh, what happens only uh, the oil will be used for only orc extinction process. The oil will be used for orc extinction process. Yeah, you can see the diagram. Yeah, it consists of various elements uh, like a breather, uh, circuit breaking chamber, orc extinction device. Yeah, basically this uh, low oil circuit breaker, uh, it, it consists of uh, two circuits, upper circuit and lower circuit. The upper circuit, the upper circuit is also known as orking chamber. Or in upper circuit, what happens? The orc extinction will be facilitated in the upper circuit, and uh, the lower lower circuit. The bottom one is uh, it is also called as lower circuit, in which in uh, lower circuit it is also filled with the oil, and uh, but these two, the upper circuit and uh, lower circuit, that is completely isolated. That is completely isolated, and uh, the entire device is uh, provided with the uh, phosphorus uh, metal insulation. And uh, here uh, we can see fixed contacts and moving contacts in the top chamber, and uh, oil is filled up to a certain level. And uh, here you can see. Uh, the two circuits, upper circuit and lower circuit. Arc extinction is facilitated in the upper circuit. Here, once uh, we, are, we are going to discuss about uh, briefly about the upper circuit. The upper circuit it consists of fixed contact and moving contacts, and it is also consist of uh, veins, horizontal veins and uh, vertical veins. The horizontal veins are employed to interrupt low currents. The horizontal veins are used to interrupt low currents. And the vertical winds are used to uh, interrupt uh, large currents. Yeah, these are the function of uh, winds. And uh, here you can see breather. The breather it avoids the moisture entering into the upper circuit. And uh, yeah, the circuit breaking in the chamber is nothing but. Uh, arc extinction uh, process will be takes place. Yeah, you can see uh, there are two devices in the upper circuit. Uh, one is fixed contact and uh, another is moving contact. The moving contact it is further uh, connected to the lower circuit and it is uh, placed uh, with uh, some uh, uh, spring control mechanism. Yeah, so under normal operating condition what happens? This moving contact that will uh, it makes contacts with the fixed contact means the two circuits will be completely closed the fixed contact and moving contact normal under normal operating condition these two circuits will be completely closed and uh, here the upper circuit and lower circuit both are filled with the oil but there is uh, no uh, continuous flow of oil between the lower circuit and upper circuit because uh, these two are completely isolated and due to this what happens uh, there is uh, no chance of uh, contamination oil in the lower circuit. So here under normal operating condition what happens this uh, moving contact that uh, makes contacts with the fixed contact uh, if any abnormal condition is takes place. So the relay it sends the abnormal condition and that energizes the tripping coil of the circuit breaker and due to which what happens uh, here in lower circuit some uh, the control mechanism is there and uh, due to this what happens whenever a fault is takes place and uh, due to this uh, control mechanism which uh, pulls the uh, which pulls the moving contact away from the contact of, um, away from the fixed contact and due to this what happens the fixed contact and moving contacts will be separated under abnormal condition under normal operating condition these two will be closed if any fault is takes place the lower circuit uh, mechanism which uh, pulls apart uh, the moving contact from the fixed contact and due to this what happens the arc will be struck between the contacts of the breaker and uh, here 
uh, what happens when the arc is struck between the contacts of the breaker or uh, the breaker contacts are operated in the oil here what happens by utilizing this heat energy what happens the gases will be generated and uh, here the turbulence is created uh, generated between the uh, generated in the oil and uh, at this instant what happens uh, due to the uh, the center of uh, the center hole of the moving contact uh, which provides uh, the continuous oil between the contacts of the breaker and due to this what happens the deionization process is takes place the deionization process is takes place and uh, due to this uh, what happens the arc extinction is facilitated yeah uh, this is the advantage of low oil circuit breaker here the oil is used for only arc extinction purpose but in case of uh, high uh, bulk oil circuit breaker what happens the oil it is used for the arc extinction process as well as for the insulation purpose but uh, that's why the huge amount of oil is required in case of bulk oil circuit breaker but in case of uh, low oil circuit breaker for the arc extinction purpose only the oil will be utilized so that's why it requires very uh, less amount of less quantity of oil when compared to the bulk oil circuit breaker yeah this is about uh, low oil circuit breaker yeah these are the advantages of a uh, low oil circuit breaker or uh, it requires a lesser quantity of oil just now we have seen the block diagram in which uh, for the ox Arc extinction purpose only it can be used. It requires smaller space. Yeah, compared with the bulk oil circuit breaker uh, diagram, it requires a very smaller space, and uh, there is a, a reduced risk of fire because uh, here we are using very less quantity of oil, and it can be used for only arc extinction purpose. So that's why there is a reduced uh, risk of fire. But in case of bulk oil circuit breaker, what happens if the arc exists for a long time? Then what happens? The gases will be generated, and uh, the pressure of the gases uh, when it uh, reaches abnormal value, then what happens? Uh, there may be chance of uh, explosions. The explosion may take place if the pressure exceeds the abnormal condition then what happens the explosion will maybe takes place so that's why here we are using less quantity of oil so that's why there is a uh, reduced uh, risk of fire <coughs> and maintenance problems are reduced here uh, the oil is not contaminated because in the lower part in the supporting chamber what happens the upper circuit and lower circuit both will be uh, properly isolated with the porcelain material and uh, due to this so what happens the maintenance problems are reduced but in case of bulk oil circuit breaker what happens uh, here the arc extinction is facilitated in the uh, tank and due to this uh, what happens the contaminated oil must be replaced with the fresh oil after a uh, few cycles yeah this is about uh, the advantages of low oil circuit breakers yeah next uh, we are going to discuss about air blast circuit breakers yeah in which oh, what happens yeah the what type of medium we are using here the air so means uh, the circuit breaker contacts will operate in the high pressure air blast previously the circuit breakers are operated in the oil but in air blast circuit breaker what happens the circuit breaker contacts are operated in the high pressure air blast yeah here what happens depending upon the uh, direction of air blast in relation to the arc the air blast circuit breakers are classified yeah here we have uh, two more uh, classifications in the air blast circuits uh, one is a uh, cross blast and uh, another is a radial blast yeah you can see here uh, depending on the direction of air blast in relation to the arc the air blast circuit breakers are classified into two types what are that axial blast axial blast type in which the air uh, 
the first classification is axial blast type. In axial blast type, in which the air blast is directed along the arc path. I'll show the diagram of uh, axial blast type and uh, cross blast type and radial blast. So here, how these uh, circuit breakers are classified? That depends on the direction of the air blast in relation to the arc. So here, the axial blast type in which air blast is directed along the arc path. I'll show the diagram. Yeah, the first one is the axial blast type. Yeah, the two vertical parts are known as contacts of the breaker. The upper bar it is known as the fixed contact and the lower one is the moving contact. See the arrow mark indicates the direction of air blast. The arrow mark indicates the direction of air blast. Yeah. See the air blast is applied along the contacts of the breaker. So this type of uh, breaker is known as axial blast circuit breaker and the next one is what cross blast type in which the air blast is directed at right angles to the arc path yeah you can see here in second diagram the first uh, see the middle figure the top one is the fixed contact and the bottom one is the moving contact these two are the contacts of the breaker see uh, under normal operating condition, these two contacts will be closed. If any fault is takes place, then what happens? This fixed contact that will be withdrawn from the moving contact. And due to this, what happens? The arc will be struck between the contacts of the breaker. Arc is undesirable. Arc is undesirable. So we have to extinguish the arc. So in order to extinguish the arc, what we are doing here, what process we are doing here, we are applying a forced air blast. A forced air blast is applied between the contacts of the breaker and uh, this forced air blast, this force air blast that extinguishes the arc. Yeah, the next one is the, the third one is the radial blast type. So, in which the air blast is directed uh, radially, yeah, you can see in the diagram, the third one, see, yeah, uh, the radial blast in which it is the combination of axial blast and radial blast. So, you can see the direction of the air blast, it is uh, applied uh, between the contacts of the breaker, the arrow marks indicates the force air blast along with the arc path. So these are the basic classifications of the air blast circuit breaker. Uh, one is uh, axial blast and second one radial blast, yeah, cross blast and radial blast. These, these are the major classifications of the air blast circuit breakers. I uh, will show the diagram of uh, axial blast uh, air circuit breaker. Uh, this is the basic block diagram. You can see the various parts of the axial blast uh, air circuit breaker. Yeah, the basic elements are moving contact and uh, fixed contact. Yeah, the moving contact is uh, placed uh, with the support of closing springs, and uh, you can see the position of the moving contact. It is further connected to the moving mechanism that is done by the con uh, closing spring and uh, you can see the right side element is the arcing chamber so left side one is the arcing chamber and uh, here these two are the fixed and moving contact the arcing chamber is employed with the fixed contact and uh, the right side element is the moving contact it is placed uh, with the support of uh, closing control spring and uh, this arcing chamber further connected to the air reservoir. The arcing chamber it is further connected to the air reservoir. And uh, the 
when the valve air valve is opened when the air valve is opened then what happens the high pressure air that is directed along the working chamber yeah see under normal operating condition this moving contact and fixed contact these two will be closed if any fault is takes place that moving contact will be the moving contact will be closed with the fixed contact if any fault is takes place this moving contact is withdrawn from the fixed contact with the help of closing springs with the help of this uh, control mechanism the moving contact is withdrawn from the fixed contact and uh, due to this what happens the arc will be struck between the contacts of the breaker yeah when the arc is struck between the contacts of the breaker the fixed contact is completely enclosed with the arcing chamber this arcing chamber further connected to the <coughs> air reservoir this when the air valve is open when it opens if any abnormal condition is takes place then only the uh, air valve will be open otherwise simply it will be closed yeah see if any abnormal condition is takes place then what happens this moving contact is withdrawn from the fixed contact and uh, this moving contact is withdrawn from the fixed contact with the help of the control mechanism that is done by the springs and the arc will be struck between the contacts of the breaker the fixed contact it is supported with the help of arcing chamber it is further connected to the air reservoir and uh, abnormal when abnormal condition is takes place air valve will be simply open the valve will be open and uh, when the valve it opens the reservoir it supplies high pressure air towards the arcing chamber and due to this what happens due to this high pressure air blast the arc will be uh extinguished between the contacts of the breaker by increasing the air blast the arc will be suppressed yeah this is about uh, axial blast air circuit breaker yeah the next one is uh, cross blast air breaker the cross blast air circuit breaker so how these uh, breakers are classified so based on the direction of the air blast along with the arc path these uh, breakers are classified the cross blast in cross blast what happens the high pressure air is applied across the contacts of the breaker the arrow marks the arrow marks indicates what air flow and uh, it consists of moving contact and fixed contact and uh, this moving contact and uh, fixed contact that is uh, enclosed with an arc splitter the moving contact and uh, fixed contact it is further uh, enclosed with the arc splitters yeah under normal operating condition this fixed contact and moving contact will be completely closed this fixed contact and moving contact will be completely closed and if any fault is takes place or if any abnormal condition is takes place then what happens the moving contact will be withdrawn from the fixed contact and due to this what happens the arc will be the arc will be initiated between the contacts of the breaker yeah here what is the medium here air air is the medium and uh, what happens when the abnormal condition is takes place under abnormal condition what happens basically uh, the huge amount of current that goes through the contacts of the breaker and uh, here due to this uh, huge amount of current what happens the contacts will be overheated and uh, by utilizing this heat energy the conducting medium is the air the conduct air uh, by utilizing this heat energy that will be what happens ionized the air will be ionized the ionized air it acts as a conductor the ionized air it consists of free electrons and it acts as a conductor and due to this what happens the current excess current will be that flows from flows uh, from uh, moving contact to the fixed contact and uh, arc is undesirable we have to extinguish the arc so that's why here we are applying high pressure air blast towards the contacts of the breaker and due to this what happens 
the arc will be split into small channels. Here, the arc uh, splitters are available across the contacts of the breaker. If we apply under abnormal condition when the arc is struck between the contacts of the breaker by applying the high pressure air blast, by applying high pressure air blast, then what happens? The arc will be split into small channels and uh, when it is uh, split into small channels, then what happens? The arc will be cooled. The arc will be cooled and uh, due to this what happens? The deionization piece takes place. The deionization is takes place and uh, enough dielectric strength will be built uh, between the contacts of the breaker and due to this what happens? The arc extinction will be facilitated. Yeah, this is about uh, cross blast uh, air circuit breaker uh, in which uh, in air blast circuit breaker what happens when uh, arc is uh, struck between the contacts of the breaker uh, by applying the high pressure air blast uh, we have to extinguish the arc. Yeah, this is the process that uh, happening in the air blast circuit breaker. So, based on the uh, direction of air blast along with the arc path uh, the air blast circuit breakers are classified into three types what are that axial air blast circuit breaker uh, cross blast circuit breakers and radial circuit break the combination of uh, axial and uh, cross blast is also known as the radial circuit breaker yeah we have seen uh, the direction of uh, air blast along the or path. Yeah, these are the classifications of uh, air blast circuit breakers. Yeah, these are the advantages of uh, air blast circuit breaker, and uh, we have seen uh, the when compared to the air uh, oil circuit breakers. Uh, what are the advantages of air blast circuit breaker? The first one is uh, compact. Uh, reliable and uh, have longer life and uh, no hazards. Yeah, uh, we have seen that uh, oil circuit breaker in which what happens uh, when the contacts are separated, uh, the oil will be vaporized and that uh, vaporized oil that that generates uh, various uh, gases and uh, here uh, there may be uh, chances of um, uh, explosion if the pressure of the gas exceeds the preset uh, pressure uh, rating and uh, here no generation of gas during and after operation. Yeah, we have seen uh, gases will be generated in case of oil circuit breaker but uh, in case of uh, air blast circuit breaker uh, there is no such type of gases generating and uh, it can interrupt any fault current and uh, no noise is produced while operating yeah uh, require less power for control operation and compared to the oil circuit breaker the air blast circuit breakers have these advantages yeah this is about uh, advantages and uh, classifications of air blast circuit breaker in the next session uh, i will explain about uh, remaining two classifications SF6 circuit breaker and a vacuum circuit breaker. Yeah, today uh, we are discussed about uh, briefly about the oil circuit breakers and the air plus circuit breakers. Okay, thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.